Hello and, and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat in which we would look at option strategies and we will work an example that illustrate those strategies that we learned such as covered call, protective put, collars, as well, as well as straddled and spread. This topic is covered on the CFA exam as well as essential or principles of investments. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,800 plus accounting, auditing, finance, tax, as well as Excel tutorial. If you like my lectures, please like them and share them. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. Share the wealth, connect with me on Instagram and Facebook. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources to supplement and complement this course, as well as your accounting CPA, CMA, CFA exam. So to illustrate this concept, we're going to be looking at an example for Joseph Jones, who's a manager at computer science. He received 10,000 shares of the company stocks as part of his compensation. The stock is currently selling at $40. So right now, if he sells the shares, he can sell 10,000 shares times 40. Joseph can net out $400,000. He would like to defer selling the shares until the next tax year. In January, he will sell his holding and he wants to put a down payment on his new house. He is worried about the stock price involved in keeping the sh his shares. At current prices, he would receive $40,000 for the stock. Actually, he would receive $400,000, not $40,000, $400,000 for the stock. If the value of his stock holdings falls below thirty five. dollars his ability to come up with the necessary down payment will be jeopardized. So he's concerned that if he have those 10,000 shares, if the stock price falls below 35, at 35, he would receive 350,000. But if they fall below 35, he may not have enough money for the down payment. On the other hand, if the stock, if the stock value rises to 45, which is again, if a stock value rises to 45, he will have 450,000. He would be able to maintain a small cash reserve after making the down payment. And it's nice to have a small cash reserve when you're buying a home because there's always stuff that you would like to buy. So we're gonna be looking at three investment strategies and we're gonna evaluate each one of them and decide which one will fit Joseph best option. So Joseph's strategy is to write a January call. That's his first strategy call option on the CSI share with a strike price of 45. These calls are currently selling for $3. Selling means he's going to receive money. He's going to write the, write the call and receive the money. So he's going to be receiving $3 per contract. Now, how many contract, uh, how many uh, $3? These calls are currently selling for $3 each. So for $3 each, he got 10,000 shares times three dollars he would be receiving thirty thousand dollar in cash for these calls so this is gonna give him thirty thousand dollar in cash now let's assume let's assume stock prices so right now here we go this uh his uh he got them at forty dollars the call is 45 the call is 45 what could happen well few things could happen let's assume the stock price goes up to uh, above 45 goes up to 55 okay well he made a mistake why because he bought those calls now ha he have to give up the stock at 45 if he give up the stock at 45 what does he get out of it so if the stock is more than 45 if the stock is more than 45 he's going to get 450000 Plus, remember, plus he received $30,000 in writing the call. He would receive $480,000. But if he, if he held, if he did not buy that call, he could have sold it at fifty five. dollars Okay, that's that. What happened if the stock price goes down to zero? Well, here's the risk that he's not covering. If the stock goes down to zero, he's in trouble because he's not protecting himself. So... If the stock less than forty less than forty five less than forty five, what's going to happen is, well, less than let I assume zero, but it doesn't have to be zero. If it's greater than forty five, so this is let's say this is the max profit. This is the max profit. What is the max loss? Well, if the price goes down, let's assume the price goes down to zero, he would still keep thirty thousand dollars. So this is the max. So the. the Basically, he can keep $30,000 if the price goes down to zero. So this is basically worst case situation. Now, what's the best case situation? The best case situation where the price doesn't exceed 45. It stays between 40 and 45, above 40, but a little bit below 45. Why? 
because if it doesn't exceeds 45 he can keep he can keep the premium he can the premium is not not the yeah yes the option he can keep the premium and the option is not exercised so if it's less than 45 what's his what's his gain well he has 10,000 10,000 shares times the price of the share at that at that point plus he's going to add to that the $30,000 premium so that's what he would keep if the price is less than 45 and hopefully it will stay above 40 between 40 and 45 and closer as closer as possible to 45 so the risk in this strategy if it falls down below 40 he has no protection whatsoever let's look at the second option the second option uh, or the second strategy is to buy January put options on the stock for 35 so here's that's his basis or that's how he, how much he's starting with now what he's thinking is look he, he's saying I can afford for the stock to go below uh, up down to 35 but below 35 I want to sell it at 35 so to protect himself he's going to buy you know he's buying uh, put for three dollar a put times ten thousand shares so he's paying thirty thousand dollar so what would happen under those circumstances what would happen under those circumstances let's assume again the price goes down to zero okay the price goes down to zero he would receive three hundred and fifty thousand because he can put those shares to someone for three thirty five but he paid remember he paid thirty thousand dollar to have this right so he will net out three twenty so worst case such situation he will net out 320 well if the price is above 35 well if the price above 35 it doesn't matter what the price is we'll take 10,000 shares times the price of the share whatever that amount is then we'll have to subtract from it 30,000 now let's assume the price is you know 100 which is that's excellent then we're up to a million right it doesn't matter then we pay we pay 30,000 so here what you're doing in this strategy is you are protecting the downside but you are keeping the upside unlimited so your upside could go forever but you you're paying thirty dollars for that protection thirty thousand dollars for that protection so that's strategy b strategy c is to establish a zero cost color by writing the january calls and buying the put of january here what we're saying is this we're gonna buy a and b have a and b at the same time what would happen if we if we have a and b at the same time well, let's take a look at this. We are at $40. Worst case situation, he would sell at 35. And what's going to happen? So he bought the put at 35. So there's a put here and there's a call here. What would happen under those circumstances? Let's assume the price falls below 35. And again, let's assume it goes down to zero. Well, if it goes down to zero, I could still sell them at 35 and I have 10,000 shares. I will net out 350,000. Well, what about the premium? I don't care. The premium is a zero cost because I I I I I um, I I sold and I bought. So I bought a put and I sold the call. Therefore the cost is zero. Therefore I will get 350. What happened if the price goes to infinity? Well, if the price goes to infinity is greater than 45, well he's going to have to give up the stock at 45. So he give up the stocks at 45. He got 10,000 shares, he would get 450,000. So this is if the stock goes up, if the stock goes down. What happened if the stock is in between? Well, if the stock is in between, you have 10,000 shares times the price of the stock, whatever that price of the stock is, okay? So whatever happened to that, you know, if it's 40, 400,000, if it's 38, 380, if it's 42, 420, whatever the price is, okay? So if the stock price is less than or equal to 35, you will preserve the principle. If the price is more than 45, well, you gave up some of the gain. And in between, you're going to get 10,000 times the price. Okay. So what is the best? So so let's evaluate each strategies. What are the advantages and disadvantages of each? You know, going through A, B, and C. Well, if he wants to preserve his wealth to buy the house, I would say C is the best. Why? Because under C, worst case situation, he would receive 350 if the stock price skyrocketed he would receive 450 so he would preserve his wealth and in case the stock skyrocketed he will be fine so that's the third option that's the third option and if he's worrying about the second op the second best option is b what happened in b b is protect you're protecting your downside the worst case situation you'd receive 350 but you keep the upside open okay and c kind of it's not it's not good because if you want to preserve wealth to buy to buy the house and see 
potentially he could go down to zero because he have no protection. So I'll go with C, best deal. I mean, I have protection. I did not pay any premium. B, I will get 350, worst case, you know, I'll get 350, but also I'll keep the upside the, and potential. Now, some people might argue that, you know, C is better than B. If, yeah, that's that's fine. That's fine. Uh, you would receive 350, but remember here, you still have to pay. You had to pay, you know, you had to pay 30,000. So you, you don't really receive 350, you would receive, because you paid the premium, you, would rece you received 320. So in C, you are limited to 350. That's why C is better than B. I forgot to factor the, the premium for B. Okay, and remember C is risky. I mean, in C, you only have the upside potential. If the stock price goes to infinity, you're gonna be very happy that you did not buy any put. You did not buy any um, put on that. Okay, so that's 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 the that's the third option, the best third option. As always, I'm gonna remind you to like this recording and remind you to visit my website farhatlectures.com for additional resources for this topic as well as other topics in finance and accounting please share this with your friend with your classmate if it benefits you it means it might benefit other people stay safe and study